Part one is session 43 of the law of one. And let's talk about cattle mutilations and conditions in fourth density. It sounds weird that I say cattle mutilation with that enthusiasm, but it's the law of one. So you know what I mean? Let's begin. So we're going to talk about cattle mutilation, but that's going to be just a couple of questions. And there is always some good information that we get out of that. At least I do. And that's what I want to share with you because there is, it's a nasty topic and there's something that even people in the UFO research and all this, they seem to don't get it, you know, in as usual, there is some sensationalism and uh, some misdirection, I believe. So hopefully my contribution helps to give a little bit more balance to, to this view of the, the negative actions on Earth or the whole cosmos, because that's the purpose of the law of one. Uh, just a, as a brief introduction, remember what, that when we talk about the law of one, we're talking about balance of understanding and wisdom, love and understanding and wisdom. So we're looking at reality from a sixth density being perspective which is Ra and we're also stimulating our third eye chakra which is the indigo ray that deals with balancing love and wisdom and seeing the creation as one there is no polarity there is no good or bad there is no positive and negative there is no light and darkness it is just like the beginning works of union which is what makes us reach seven density and in our body would be uh god's consciousness okay so just a, you know a little introduction into that because that's probably where i'm going to head with the cattle mutilation interpretation of what ra says which i think is fascinating it's a fascinating topic uh but yeah we're going to talk about that um the la the the later part of the, the session actually halfway through the session and i think after a question that we're going to cover too of course and um, it starts dealing with the conditions in four density, and then it goes into fifth density and sixth density. So I'm just going to cover in this first part because it's kind of it's a long session. There's a lot of exchanges between Don and Ra, but there is um, they're very short. However, I'm going to cover just half of it until the point where I believe they start talking about the conditions of fifth density. Um, but that's going to be for next video in any case. So I'm going like from middle to last and now to the beginning. <laughs> the beginning of the session actually starts with uh, Ra. I I'm just gonna read that f directly from uh, from the material and not show the, the slides because uh, it's just a reference. There's four questions that I didn't, or four exchanges uh, between Don and Ra that I didn't include here because there's not much relevance. Again, this is just part of the, the, the vanilla um, um, material that we have. It's not part of book five or specific of the re-listen version. It's just the contact with Ra. And it starts just by Ra when they communicate. As soon as they started getting communication from Ra, uh, Ra always started by saying, I greet you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We communicate now. At least that's, uh, that's the majority of them. They say, you know, we communicate now, right? So in this one, they say, I greet you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. And they say, before we communicate, may we request the adjustment without the touching of this instrument's physical body complex of the item which presses upon the instrument's head. This is causing some interference with our contact. So they go into a couple of exchanges um, um, and Don asks if it's the pillow or something else. Then Ross says there is like a little folding uh, and in the, uh, at the at the area of the crown um, of Carla's head, so the crown chakra. So that fold needed to be flattened out, um, and that's what they did. They just did that, and in the exchange four forty three point four, Don says, "I'm sorry that we failed to notice that," and Ra just says, "We communicate now." So that's that's like <laughs> their um, all right. We're here, you know. 
I, I sometimes when I read it, it sounds funny because it seems like, you know, Don says, oh, I'm sorry that I did that. And they just say like, all right, we're here. What do you want? <laughs> but it's not like that, of course. They're just saying, OK, we're here to communicate now. And so that is the beginning of the session. Just a little adjustment on the setup that they have for for the channeling. And yeah, we're going to go straight into the first question. Remember, from last session, Don wanted to ask about cattle mutilation. And it's funny, these are the things that I just consider personally funny that, you know, sometimes there is uh, there's there is a topic or a subject that Ra is very interested in talking and they just go over, like they say, okay, it's gonna be the final question. And Don keeps asking and asking and they keep answering. And in this one, uh, Ra said like, yeah, no, we're out. <laughs> we don't wanna talk about cattle mutilation. But this time, I mean, they didn't say that, but you just, I don't know, I just like to put a little humor into this. But they finished with that and they said, no, let's leave it for next session, you know. <laughs> I, I like to think that Rob was like, no, let's not talk about cattle mutilation. But now, you know, they have to talk about cattle mutilation because that's the first question that Don has. And hey, Rob was there to answer questions. And you're just going to see what Rob says um, at the end of this. So, all right, let's talk about the... Um, phenomenon of cattle mutilation which we touch about um, I think 10 sessions ago or so even more it's been a while Don says question number five or exchange number five I'll just try to pick up from the last session last question left over from the last session if you can answer it I don't know if it is of any importance see Don is very perceptive there they he knows already like how how far off this question is but it just occurred to me that the parts removed in cattle mutilations are the same every time. And I just wonder if this was related to the energy centers and why they were important, if that was so. Uh, it's a really good question, actually. Oh, or a really good parallel that Don is asking here or uh, creating. So Ron says, this is basically correct if you may understand that there is a link between energy centers and various thought forms. Thus, the fears of the mass consciousness create climate for the concentration upon the removal of bodily parts which symbolize areas of concern or fear in the mass consciousness so again you know even though cattle mutilation is not something um, conducive let's say to spiritual growth and evolution of the soul if you will uh, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a good observation from Don saying like, you know, it's always the same parts. Are they related to the energy centers? And Ron says, yeah, you know, there is a relationship and the link is between, um, uh, the link is between the energy centers and various thought forms, but the thought forms are say, um, interested in, in certain parts that are related to the um, the emotions and fears of society, you know why why else would that be, you know? Um, so the fears of mass consciousness create the climate for the concentration upon the removal of bodily parts, which is uh, our collective consciousness has fears of any kind. You know, it could be uh, survival uh, or sexual or from you know any any sort of you know manipulation so these energy centers are related to certain organs and the the reason why they do it um i think they're going to explain it so i'm not going to go too further into this um but yeah that's that's what they're saying you know there is a link between the thought forms that are the ones creating the cattle mutilation just if you don't remember from that session i forgot which one it was when we talked about cattle mutilation but there is um there are two type of of entities that do this one is a thought form and the other one is uh, a creature which you know creepy enough we're gonna get into that and i have something very important to say about that and some uh, small uh, short rant that I'll, I'll i'll go into possibly not that long not that long um but you know it has to do with with this the agenda of the orion group as we'll find out so again I forgot what I was saying, but <laughs> had to do with the um, uh, our predisposition as a collective consciousness to incite these uh, entities, the thought forms in this case, to create this this mutilation of of, of cattle. 
which uh, you know it's, it's a it's a pretty nasty business because they remove um, I'm not very familiar but the little I've heard is like certain organs uh, reproductive organs I believe uh, rectum the eyeballs uh, um, I forgot what else, like testicles maybe, which is sexual organs. I mean, it's just it's just weird, you know, what they do. But now we can see why, you know, because this creates a sort of... Uh, well, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but it's creating... Let's just say so far that is it's, it's related to the fears of... And not only fears, but our, our conditioning in terms of how we... Uh, what we... we we deem relevant what we deem important you know it's all physicality of course you know that's the low blows are always there you know low energy centers so um it's um it's about bodies you know like we are concerned with our bodies we are concerned with you know it's orange and yellow uh energy centers so again it has to do with the climate of the mass consciousness um because that's what the removal of the bodily parts symbolize in terms of the organs and that and people relate it right away it's like a subconscious uh relationship that they create so um that symbolizes the areas of concern or fear concern see that like that's the word we are concerned with our body and i don't know let's say for some reason we're concerned with nipples for some you know bizarre i mean wouldn't be surprised you know with our social media being as as bizarre as it is, you know, going into nipples, nipple fetish probably exists, but just saying that, you know, and there is a lot of, you know, concern with nipples and, you know, cattle mutilation might very well go into nipples, you know, so I don't know, just, just making up stuff here, but just, just for you to kind of get the idea and then people freak out, it's like, oh my god, nipples, uh, nipples are being removed from cattle, oh, my nipples, <laughs> um, I find it funny, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Some people find this grim cattle mutilation and so on. And I, I'm not leaving my compassion for animals, obviously, on the side. It's just I mean, I'm making fun of society, not of animals. I think that's what they do to animals is gross, of course. But once again, you know, we have to balance our love and compassion for animals with some wisdom. So that's what we're here for. Let's get some wisdom from Ra. As Don says in question six, are you saying then that these parts that are removed are related to the mass consciousness of the third density human form on the planet and this fear is being used in some way by the second density entities or correction the thought form entities that do the mutilations and ra says this is correct as laterally stated the thought form entities feed upon fear thus they are able to do precise damage according to systems of symbology the other second density types of which you speak need the what you call blood now we're getting into the creepy zone because so far we were talking about thought forms um and um yeah it's funny how ra mentions that because don corrected himself but don you know ra says mentions it there and it goes into the conversation you know veers into something else that is going to lead into my rent um or my yeah, my little rent. So, Don is asking, you know, what we said already, is this re related to the fears of the mass consciousness? And Ra says this is correct, you know, as we already said. You know, the thought forms, they feed upon the fear. So, uh, thought forms are entities on their own that exist. They, they reside in the astral planes. They don't reside physically. They are they are not incarnate here. So the way for them to feed from whatever their source is, and these are thought forms that we have created as humanity, you know, from uh, any sort of need that we have that is low, uh, low vibration. Uh, there's a lot of sexual there because there's a lot of sexual sexual distortions and not what sex is really meant for, and you know these. I'm not saying that they they shouldn't exist. It's just that that's you know they are the, they're there as teachers. Thought forms are there as teachers too. They are here to teach you, you know, um, whatever it may be. You know, fear of being eaten, fear of being you know uh, stabbed in the back, fear of this, fear of that, fear, fear, fear. 
they're fear-based so they're there they're here to teach you something but they need that fear to maintain themselves they need that fear you know um so in a way you can just see the ecosystem that exists within the different energy centers and um their uh their purpose you know there there are entities that definitely need this sort of nourishment and you know we've all played our parts to feed them you know we we all pray because it's a symbiosis as we learn from them we learn that we don't need them anymore that they are not part of us however you know the the more and the longer we stay in uh, in the lower energy centers concern our attention our focus our energy is just going into the energy centers the lower energy centers then we're feeding that and that's fine you know the thing is that we who are of a north oriented goal because we already discover that there is a north and the north being the the north pole say that is consciousness is god's consciousness your god's consciousness not some separate consciousness it's yours is you is actually who you are so that seeking makes us feel sometimes the ego feels that you have to get rid of fears you have to get rid of you know and that is blocking that is um that is uh, repression of emotions you shouldn't feel like that you know you should explore it and you know so the thought forms are there to teach us something and they need their nourishments now um, this is one of the the ways that they they create sort of like a feast for them because it is allowed it's allowed by the consciousness and it's allowed by uh those who serve that consciousness too and who actually benefit from that consciousness which is of course the orion group maintaining people there because it's easier to manipulate it's not because it's you know it's better for them it's yes it does feed some of their pets let's call them that but it's um just put it this way there are angels in the different planes too so I, I'm kind of being thorough here or for completion. We have angels who reside in the astral planes as well, but they are guides for us. They're teachers too, the same way. And, you know, there are others in the confederation, of course, there are all of the confederation who benefit. I'm not gonna call them pets, but you can call them pets too. I mean, they, they are, you know, here to serve. Angels are here to serve or what we perceive as angels. They they're called different names, you know, ancestors, guides, and so on. Um, well, ancestors could be more, you know, to our actual ancestor. But in any case, it's just energy. H energy of higher frequency. That's it, you know, period. Without getting into specific symbological uh, meanings of this and that. It's just higher energy um, frequencies, higher frequency energies. So uh, that is what feeds, I'm sorry, this is not my rant, I'm just going on a tangent here. Um, but you know, this, this is important to know that it exists and it's everywhere, you know? So when you are in a place where there is say, you know, a lot of drug uh, abuse or addiction or um, an environment, where there's, you know, a lot of, you know, anger and fear and there is, you know, this threatening, you know, environment, which is, say, in my countries, we call it barrios, which is uh, the slums, say, in where, you know, people live and there's a sort of hierarchy of uh, thugs that live there and they have their own, you know, call them mafias too or gangs. So, you know, these places are filled with this low energy uh, vibrations because there's a lot of fear there. And there, believe me, there's a lot of entities there. They feed on this. They feast on this. You know, um, it could be other places. It could be places like, I don't know. Um, it could be anything. Anything that is related to the lower energy center. Survival, identity, um, um, sexuality. Then, uh, I don't know. Some Anything that you can see that is very intense in those lower frequencies. You can definitely you bet yourself that um there is a vast amount of uh, entities that live there we call them negative entities but that's that's just you know their purpose they're there as a school for these people and people come out of these areas and this is why 
you know, people call them heroes, you know, and rightly so. I mean, they they came out of hell and they defeated all those entities, defeated, you know, they just transcended all that. And now they found God, they found Jesus, they found Buddhism, they found, you know, anything spiritual because they found higher energy frequencies. So that is, you know, that's the reason. So it, it's all an interplay. We're looking at the ecosystem of energies that are here and that it's not that we should get rid of them. They're supposed to be here for the teachings, teaching, teach learners. So let's go on. Next question is the last one in catamulation, I think, where Don says, these other second density types need the blood to remain in the physical. Do they come in and out of our physical density from one of the astral planes? And Ra says, these entities are, shall we say, creatures of the Orion group. They do not exist in astral planes, as do the thought forms, but wait within the Earth's surface. We as always remind you that it is our impression that this type of information is unimportant. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, yeah, I'll go back to that because that's what's going to end the cattle mutilation discussion. But now, and this is going to lead me to my uh, my short rant, if I didn't enough already. <laughs> Ross says that these entities actually exist. This, these are not entities that come out of the astral plane. Uh, they manifest here, they do their thing, and then they leave because they need that as nourishment. Ross is actually saying, which is the creepy part, you know, for... For the people that are, and again, you know, this is not to in, invoke any sort of fear or terror, you know, but these creatures are real, you know, these creatures are, um, I remember in in my teenagers, um, there was a thing in Puerto Rico called the Chupacabras, and El Chupacabras is, um, it was this creature that would go and do cattle mutilation, they would, it would feed, you know, on these animals, and people were freaking out. You know, so um, th these creatures are real. There are there are physical beings that exist in our reality. They are creatures of the Orion group. I call them pets because that's you know th they created them. You know, um, they do not exist in astral planes as do the thought forms. The thought forms are created by our, our mass consciousness. You know, and they they exist in the ecosystem as as they are. But these other creatures are from the Orion group. And uh, <laughs> I love how they say this is, I don't know, it just sounds creepy when they say, but wait within the Earth's surface. Uh, Corey Good, if you are familiar with Corey Good and David Wilka, Corey Good has some um, stories about, um, I forgot if he went down there or if people, no, he read from, from the, um, I forgot what it was called, but there were like, uh, clear tablets that he used to study from, according to to his uh, to his story, and he would read that there were creatures under the, the Earth's surface that were kind of like humanoid, reptilian-looking, and you know these things apparently are real. There are several uh, explorers who have described these creatures and you know their interaction with them, which not physical verbal interaction, but just like looking at them and they're horrifying because that's their purpose so these creatures do exist and that's their purpose they're just here to in, uh, instill fear in people by doing certain things and just by existing you know uh, but it is our uh, complete will or our focus to give them that energy or not you know just me by talking about them there is you know some sort of attention you know to them this is why negative entities I mean this is higher uh, density entities they love giving names you know when they channel and this is why confederation other sources they don't give names you know they just give some raw you know well they called us raw yeah we're raw whatever you know you call us whatever and they several times the confederation says like you guys are completely you have a fetish for names you know you have to name everything why when you give name to something you give power to it and you're taking away power from you so, you know, this is why Buddhism as well is just like, no names, we have no names, you know, we don't know, we have no idea what's going on. <laughs> this is just reality, it's just, woo, this is it. It's all vibration. Anything else, we don't know. Uh, but yeah, negative entities from higher densities, they like to give names and they, they love that because they create that, um, that 
that focus of us calling, you know, whatever it is. Um, so even in some in some visions that I've heard where they see like a congregation of Buddha and Jesus and so on. And the person says like, oh, Jesus, you know, he's like, um, forget, don't call me Jesus. I'm not Jesus. You know, I'm like, I'm just here to inspire you. So, um, yeah, so just putting focus on, on, on negative entities is just enough to feed them because you're giving attention to them. You're giving, you're giving your energy. You are so powerful. We don't have any idea of how powerful we are by channeling our energy in what we focus. This is why the will is so important in our work because whatever we put our will is where we put our energy and our energy just manifests in our reality and just whoop, it's like a projection. So that's another exercise. It's very important that we mentioned in the last uh, video where you you put your, your attention is where you put your energy. Joe Dispenza says and it's true. But situated in your energy centers, look, analyze yourself where you're putting your, your attention every day. You know, and you say like, okay, I'm putting my attention there. That's fine. You know, let me explore it see what's happening in my lower energy centers. But you have a calling. You have a, a eternal calling for from God. And God comes from up here, the, the upper energy centers. So, again, uh, this is not even my rant. Oh, my God, I'm sorry. Um, going on on tangents. But... Yeah, these creatures exist. This is going to my rant. Okay, my rant is that, uh, you see, there is, there, there is the possibility, there exists the possibility for Orion Group to create these creatures or to maintain them, whatever they did. I, I, I don't know. I don't know the history behind it. But if that exists, and talking about the, the focusing of energy that we may have, like, oh my god, these creatures actually exist, and they are in the, there are people who uh, invest years of their lives, you know, talking about this and getting really into it and going into, yeah, you know, we should classify them, we talk about this, and you are feeding them by doing this. Um, see, now I'm not saying that they shouldn't, because that would be uh, breaking the ecosystem. But people who are interested in the higher energy centers and experiencing reality from a different point of view, maybe it's not that important. And that's why Ross says this information may not be important. Uh, it's kind of unimportant, they say. But my little uh, twist to this is to say that by knowing that this is true and informing ourselves that this is true, we also become aware that the opposite is also true. So as we accept and we realize that these, you know, these sort of creatures and entities are real, we realize that their opposites are also real. So, you know, we say like, oh, instead of giving my attention to these thought forms, let me give my attention to angels or whatever name you want to call them, higher frequency entities. You know, who are here to show me, you know, harmony, to show me life, beautiful as it is, and not to keep me in the fear-based mentality, which is what they want to do. Uh, getting alcohol addicted or drug addicted or being sexual addicted to anything, you know, it's just an addiction is that, you know, it's just creating that, you know, you're investing your energy and they're feeding, they're leeching your energy that way because the thought forms are there, you know, and they're like, oh God, thank God goodness this person is thinking about this which I need so much so instead of that we become aware of its opposite because and now I go into the creatures if these creatures are real then other creatures are real too who are opposite to them because there is balance in everything and if the Orion group uses these creatures for that then there are other creatures you know that exist for us and maybe you can see this as your uh animal totem that when you see them in nature you say wow you know this is a message for me it comes from a higher frequency i don't know just go bonkers on this and create your own reality you know, on the hidden creatures that might exist you know maybe i don't know what do they call them unicorns or whatever it is fantastic creatures that may exist in in, in reality but in any case it's just uh transmuting this energy from lower um, frequencies to higher frequencies because they exist and that's fine that's all we need to know you know to you need to learn darkness in order to appreciate light 
So this is my way of saying that there is something of value to take out of here for your day-to-day, -day, um, I don't know, experience, focus of energy, uh, attention. And like Ra says, you know, it is our impression that this information is unimportant. And Don agrees and says, I agree with you wholeheartedly. But I sometimes am at a loss before investigation into an area to know whether it is going to lead to a better understanding. This just seemed to be related somehow to the energy centers that we were speaking of. Now he goes into the next question. I'm going to make a statement and have you comment on it for its correctness. Correctness. The statement is, when the creator's light is split or divided into colors and energy centers for experience, then in order to reunite with the creator, the energy centers must be balanced exactly the same as the split light was at it as it originated from the creator. Is this correct? Ra says, to give this query a simple answer would be nearly impossible. We shall simplify by concentrating upon what we consider to be the central idea towards which you're striving. We have many, many times now, well, I added the, an extra many there, but we have many times now spoken about the relative importance of balancing as opposed to the relative unimportance of maximal activation of each energy center. The reason is as you have correctly surmised. Okay, so what is Don asking? And what is Ra talking about? Don asks, a very good question actually, very intellectual question about metaphysics. If the light was split in energy centers in a way for us to uh, to figure out, say, to to realize, then for us to reunite, so there is the prism from pure light, prism, seven energy centers, and we are trying to figure out those energy centers. I have four here, but it's supposed to be seven. This, right. you get the meaning. <laughs> seven energy centers, and um, they. <laughs> Uh, they're supposed to be balanced in that way, or they're supposed to be realized, you know. This is our struggle. This is our... Let me change that word. It's not struggle. This is our play. This is our game. You know, we're here to... It's like a this, uh, a, a puzzle uh, is... Um, a jigsaw puzzle is a... Or a puzzle in general is is a game. However, it's a struggle. So that's, that's you know, that's how it is. We just play, you know, how, right? how, do, how do I figure this out? And it's fun, you know. And you see, it's funny, a jigsaw puzzle is actually a pretty good analogy here because you're breaking down an image. The image of God is broken down into pieces, shattered into thousands of pieces, millions, infinite pieces, who knows. So, but <laughs> to maintain it into the human realm, thousands of pieces, you know, and it's our lifetime to keep playing. That is the realization of, wow, I did it. You know, I finally figured it out. Um, so, that's basically what Don is saying, you know. Uh, he mentions, what does he say? Um, splits. Split light was, um, it, it is our, you know, sorry, uh, our goal to reunite with the creator by reuniting, you know, those the, the split light. But Ra is saying, you know, that this is, it's, it's an impossible answer and I can get it because there is no, um, I don't know, I, I feel like there is no specific way to to do this and this is going to get into what Ra says uh, says about how we um, we need to find balance and balance is where we're gonna find everything uh, because it's not about you know it's split and now we need to figure it out exactly as it is so at least from my limited point of view I see it that way I'm not I'm not entirely sure why is is it they say it's a simple answer. Oh, yeah, to give a simple answer, this is impossible. So in any case, what they're saying and that what they're going into is saying, let me let us just simplify what we think you're asking. And they go into the relative importance of balancing. Um, because again, you know, it's the seven energy centers that we need to work on to balance. And it's not, you know, to find the specific activation that is needed for for one or the other. Because, you know, we are creators here. It's not like the, the logos created, yes, it created a pattern, you know, in which we are going to develop. But that is not a pattern that we need to follow. Let me put, rephrase this because it sounds like I'm contradicting myself. 
The Logos creates uh, ways into these patterns to be developed. We are the ones that are weaving the path, put it that way. And that's why I guess it's also kind of impossible to give a, a simple answer. Uh, but we are weaving that path and that is the energy centers. Now, the key thing is not to activate them, you know, randomly and, you know, excessively, but just balancing them. And that's what they're saying. You know, it's it's not a maximal activation of inner, each energy center, but uh, of balancing. And they're going to emphasize a little bit more here what they mean. And they say, thusly, the entity is concerned if it be upon the path of positive harvestability. Again, it's just one of the patterns, positive, uh, one of the main paths of patterns, positive, with the regularize, uh, regularizing of the various energies of experience. Thus, the most fragile entity may be more balanced than one with extreme energy and activity in service to others due to the fastidiousness with, with, with which the will is focused upon the use of experience and knowing the self. The densities beyond our, your, uh, your own give the mind... Oh my God, I can't read today. The densities beyond your own give the minimally balanced individual much time, space, and space-time with which to continue to refine these inner balances. Uh, my connection with Ra's vocabulary is not really good today. <laughs> so, all right, so what's Ra uh, me mentioning and emphasizing here? Uh, so, in the positive path, they are concerned with regularizing the various energies of experience. Various energies of experience are anything that is thrown to us in our reality is our um, it's our energy, right? And that energy is an experience. So we are balancing or regularizing those um, those energies that are coming to us, and that's how we are assimilating them. Remember when we said that no situation has an emotion an emotional charge. That means that situations are just energy and we create emotions. We kind of tangled up the energy into different, uh, see, we weave that into emotions and those emotions end up being, you know, our catalyst. So, or at least the alarm for the catalyst that is coming. So, um, so we're supposed to regularize that in the positive path. So that is through balance. That is through knowing that and accepting, accepting everything, not saying like, we need more of this, I need to do more of that, but just accepting yourself perfect as you are. You are always perfect as it is. You know, you, um, that's how you seek balance. You always see yourself perfect. So they say that the most fragile entity may be more balanced than one with extreme energy and activity in service to others due to the fastidiousness. So a fragile entity could be, um, Somebody who is just sensitive or um, not sensitive, probably not the right word, but um, could be sens sensitive to emotions. Yes, uh, but it's very balanced because I'm trying to come up with an example, but uh, say somebody who is sensitive, sensitive is not the word, but let's use sensitive for a moment. Um, weak sounds too, too much. Um, uh, fragile in the sense fragile maybe uh, is that what they well they use fragile <laughs> so somebody who is not um, very well developed in in all their chakras right that's that's the perfect example the activation of their energy centers is not too too bright you know they, they don't have a, a super open heart they still have some sort of reserves into you know what the world should be you know who deserves love and who doesn't uh they don't they're not very wise say you know to uh, to manage this love of course and they have some some fears and so on but this person is say you know somebody who goes into their nine to five and is concerned which is and i've met people like this who you can see that they they kind of inspire this this peace around them they don't care about like oh you know politics i remember a guy from work that used to be very you could just see the peace in him, but he wasn't a spiritual person. He was just a person that enjoyed his life and enjoyed, you know, going to work, doing his thing, going home, popping up a beer, watching baseball, going to bed, kissing his wife and his kids. You know, there was balance in his life. 
you can see that in a lot of people you can see you know completely neurotic you know uh, spiritual people I mean well you can see a lot of neurotic spiritual people lately um, so-called spiritual um, but you know and that's that's people who are probably very imbalanced because they're there to give so much love or to bring so much wisdom into people you know I need to inform you I need to wake you up <laughs> because you're asleep you're a sheeple you know I mean sheeple exist that's just part of the dynamics the ecosystem so when we incur into imbalances and when we have this sort of ideal ideals for life no <laughs> ideas destroy life so that sounds weird but in my philosophical view that is true um that is very you know Taoist but it is it's it's true we, our ideals how many people have destroyed our uh, our environments because of ideals <laughs> this is how it should be who says it? you who are you um so yeah that's what they mean you know because there is a fastidiousness with which the will is focused upon the use of experience and knowing the self and you see this this guy which we're gonna call Bob you know Bob that used to go to work they would have he would have an experience of you know everything was fine you know he would go to work he would have you know you drive home traffic oh you know big deal whatever get me upset I do get upset with traffic you know but it is what it is and you can see people like this there was another guy actually who was very balanced too and he was a funny enough he was a, a retired uh, cop from from uh, from NYPD uh, New York City in the 80s <laughs> Of all years of, or decades, he was from the 80s, and he was so balanced. He was just, he was a phenomenal person. <laughs> I still love him. I love you, Jim. If you're watching this, which you're not, <laughs> definitely not. Um, but yeah, uh, there is there's so much you know into how how much people can be balanced. People who live in the mountains say, you know, people who live in. in in an island they're very balanced I mean what is their life they wake up you know they go fish they go do their thing they pick up some coconuts they rest with their wives and talk about whatever you know the tides or the air or the Sun they go to bed I mean the these are balanced people you know they're not fully activated you know whole heart but they'll probably treat you as you know would much better than people in the city right so you can see the interplay of how balance is always key, no matter who you are, where you are, what you are. So yeah, you can see that there. I hope that I, I kind of illustrated that point. I think that I made some poor attempts there, but um, in any case, balance is key. No matter what you are, who you are, accept yourself. That's, that's it, it's so simple, but we want to complicate it. Just that simple. This is who I am, whatever it is, you know, yes, this, this is it. Say this. <laughs> what you see is what you get. You know, this is something you tell yourself. What you see is what you get. See, say that as a mantra every time you wake up in the morning when you see the mirror. You're like, hey, <laughs> this is it. It doesn't get better than this, <laughs> or worse, you know, for that matter. So, all right. They say the densities beyond your own give the minimally balanced individual much time, space, and space time with which to continue to refine these inner balances, because once you are balanced and you have, you know, sufficiently open hearts uh, then you go into four density and you say like oh wow you know I did not appreciate all of this and now you open your heart a lot more you know and that's the purpose of four density our further densities are there to refine the people who are minimally balanced and who have you know their heart open and say wow yeah you know I'm I'm definitely on the wagon on the bandwagon of loving the universe you know loving myself as the universe I'm there and then all of a sudden a portal opens when you die and you say like wow you know I've entered the light and that light is just you know enjoying the universe but then you open your heart too much and you're like raw in fourth density and then you go to fifth density and you're like oh my god I have so much imbalance in my love I need to find the wisdom to balance this because you know it's, I can't keep going this way and then you go into sixth density and so on but that's that's the that's the gist of it all right, we have more to cover. Don says, in the next density, or the in the fourth density, is the catalyst of physical pain used as a mechanism for experiential balancing. Ra says, the use of physical pain is minimal, having only to do with the end of the fourth density incarnation. This physical pain would not be considered severe enough to treat, shall we say, in third density. The catalyst of mental 
and spiritual pain are used in fourth density. So we're going to get more into this, but now we're going towards four density because um, I guess Ra mentioned four density or the densities above our, our own. And Don wanted to go there, so um, what was it that Don asked? Pain? Um, catalyst of physical pain use. And Ra says no. I mean, um, it's very minimal, having only to do with the end of four density incarnation, which uh, we know there is incarnation. I made a video in Spanish, unfortunately, not in English, where I described uh, the um, the different time space and space times that exist in the whole creation. But you, you're you're so far into this that you can visualize it yourself. You can see all the densities having. Uh, time, space, and space time, at least from third density onwards, which is really what matters here. And you, you can see an interaction between our time, space, body, or manifestation, and then space time as the incarnation part. And so we have third density, time, space, and space time. That just means metaphysical uh, energy uh, existence in one side and the physical one. And then there is corresponding ones in fourth, fifth, and sixth. And, um, you know, this is, this is helpful to see that there are incarnations in four density and fifth and even sixth density. But the line between uh, incarnations and between incarnations thins out as we progress, especially after fourth or after third density and fourth, that line is like much thinner. So you're more in touch with your time space body than you are here. So that's why catalyst is so strong here too in the human form or third density. But in any case, physical pain is minimal, having only to do with the end of fourth density. We're gonna get into that why. Uh, they say this physical pain would not be considered severe enough to treat like it is in third density. Uh, there is no pain. There is no pain like, you know, um, illness. Illness is disease and disease is an imbalance in our lower energy centers. They are related, of course, to heart chakra, but that those are also related to our lower energy centers. Uh, the crystallized being in the energy centers also have some sort of disease because there's always some sort of imbalance. You know, third density is supposed to be that, you know, it's supposed to teach you that. And in fourth density, you are no longer attached to the lower energy centers. They are there as a resource rather than um, a resource or a frame of reference in a way. That's how I perceive it anyways. It's just speculation of mine. Uh, disclaimer. Um, but there is, uh, there is a, a lot more. There is no veil. When there is no veil, then you have much more perception of what your energy centers are. And, um, you know, there's, there's no such thing as physical pain as they explain. The catalyst of mental and spiritual pain are used in four density. We use that here too, uh, but it's much rare to perceive. You know, mental, yes. Spiritual is the one that is kind of rare, but it's still, it's not rare, but it's hard to, to realize. Uh, it does manifest though. And that is like the yearning that we we may have for unity with the creator. And that is what four density is. You know, it's about um, experiencing more mental and spiritual pain. So. Let's go more into physical pain, as Don says. Why is physical pain a part of the end of four density? Ra says, you would call this variety of pain weariness. And weariness is, again, you know, it just makes sense as you're ending your incarnation. You can see that here too. You have a sort of like old people, they just want to go. You know, they're, they're not unhappy with their lives. They're happy, you know, with everything they have done, but they just feel like their, their incarnation is over. And I can see that in four density, that's also the purpose. Like you see that your configuration as a body in four density has reached its peak. Its peak. And that is, that's it. What else are you going to do? So you start feeling this weirdness and it's just time to go. So it's not, it's not pain as we, as Ra said, you know, not like in third density that needs to be treated. It's just, you know, it, it's a pain that it feels, you feel the pain, the physical pain of your body uh, dissolving, I guess, into just, you know, time space. Again, you go into and you reincarnate again. Uh, we're gonna explore, I think a little bit more. Yes, there is, there, that, those are the next questions. Like how long are 
uh, the lifespans there. So, um, yeah, there, there's not much to say there, but there's, there is some physical pain at the end of the incarnation and fourth density. But it's, uh, it's weariness, it's not physical pain as we know it. Question 11, Don says, can you even state the average lifespan in the fourth density of space-time incarnation? And Ra says, the space-time incarnation typical of harmonious fourth density is approximately 90,000 of your years as you measure time. And um, space-time incarnation, again, is just the incarnation of fourth density body. And harmonious, I, I like they say harmonious fourth density because does it leave for us to speculate that they, they, there may be um, inharmonious sort of four density could happen, possibly. Like Ra had a very harmonious four density, very harmonious. And so they were probably uh, enjoyed their 90,000 lifespan. Now remember, we had a 900 life, 900 year lifespan here on earth when we started. And there are some biblical uh, um, characters that are meant are told to be uh to have lived that long seth i believe was another one i may be wrong there even though it's not biblical i think very bad with the bible um but in any case you know ninety thousand uh years and uh i have to give credit to scott mandelker i always have in the description of my video scott mandelker's interpretation of the law of one by the way it's a little ad for scott I think his interpretation is phenomenal and I gotta give credit to what he says or the parallel that he made between the 90,000 year and the 900 year uh, lifespan that we have here, which is, um, what is it, 10, 20, uh, 10, uh, 100 times more, right, two zeros, 100 times more the lifespan that is, um, say, it's the, it's the typical or the... Um, by default in four density. So we have 990,000 there too. Now this also relates, and Scott says, which makes a lot of sense, that there's a hundred year, uh, there's, a, I'm sorry, a hundred times more catalyst here in third density. And that makes sense with our incarnation being 900 years. So it's a hundred times more powerful. So the parallel that I'm making here and that Scott didn't mention, or at least I, I didn't hear him mention, is that we have been cut down about 10 times that. So our catalyst may be a thousand times or more. Because, <laughs> I mean, we don't even have the lifespan being 90 years, but we're sort of there. You know, we can reach 90 years. And that's still, you know, a, a decent uh, amount of years to, to be lived. And, you know, people respect you for living. Wow, you know, you live enough. Um, but it's the quality of living to the 90 years, too. That's another one. In any case, you know, 90 years, if we take this, uh, we factor in this into our equation, that does that mean we have a thousand more times the catalyst in third density right now because of our lifespan being shortened? And we talked about this in session 19 or 20, somewhere around there, uh, why our lifespan was shortened. Um, so does that mean that? Well, probably, you know, because our society is very sick as we know it. Our society is very physically uh, sick. There's a lot of illness, this ease. So that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. W what does that mean? Oh, we're in hell. No, we are in heaven because we have a thousand more catalysts to make sure we use for our spiritual growth. Now, how do you do that? Do you go outside, you know, and I'm gonna go find catalysts for me to grow? Not really. All you have to do is just be open to the universe and say, really, catalysts? Shoot at me. Shoot at me, bro. What do you got? <laughs> you know, shoot at me. W what's going on? And it's going to come to you. When you analyze your life and you say, well, you know, I'm very spiritual and I love this law of one stuff and whatever other texts that I follow or uh, spirituality, Buddhism, Taoism, you know, Christianism, Christianity, whatever. You know, um, okay, you follow all that. But... I still have problems. All right, those problems are your catalyst. Go work on them, you know, figure it out. You will be, uh, <laughs> sounds terrible, well, not terrible, it's, it sounds contradictory because of the way I think, but you'll be, you'll be winning life, you know? <laughs> you'll be beating the game. There's no game to be beaten, but 
you get the idea. You know, you'll you'll be uh, transcending. You'll be getting you know some some uh, what should we call it? It's not it shouldn't be brownie points. It should be uh, golden points. Whatever I don't know spiritual points. Let's put it that way. Anyhow, I'm going. Uh, <laughs> I'm going too much side uh, side tracking here. Next question, question twelve. Don says, then is there a time space? Are there multiple incarnations in four density with time space experiences between incarnations? Uh, we discussed this already, so yeah, Ron says this is correct. How long is the cycle of experience in four density in our years? Ron says the cycle of experience is approximately 30 million of your years. If the entities are not capable of being harvested sooner, there is in this density a harvest which is completely the function of the readiness of the social memory complex. It is not structured as is your own, for it deals with a more transparent distortion of the one infinite creator. So yeah, that is, that's pretty interesting. Uh, the cycle of experience is approximately 30 millions of our years. Um, and they could be harvested sooner. Now we know that too in here in third density, that's, that's also possible. Not on planet Earth. <laughs> we only had like we had zero on the first major cycle, and then a hundred, only a hundred and something, hundred and fifty, I think, uh, on the second mas uh, major cycle. Now at the end of the master cycle, we're all running around finding harvestability, or people on Earth. But the majority seems to they're, they're going to repeat. Um, anyhow, I made a video talking about harvest. And how I think the transition is going, and if I remember, minute 55, I'll put it up here so you can go watch it. Um, just my ideas into how 4 density is going to, uh, to happen. And I think a lot of people who are in 3rd density right now, who didn't acquire enough um, spiritual points <laughs> for harvest, in this cycle at least, they are being held um, right now, th not by anybody, but just they themselves are waiting for a planet in which they're going to incarnate because right now all the people are incarnating are for four density uh, harvest or those who have the possibility not those who need a lot of work so in any case you know that's I can go on talking about this for hours Jesus Mary and Joseph all right there is in this density a harvest which is completely the function of the readiness of the social memory complex see there's a difference here uh, and we're gonna get into that they're saying it's not structure as is our own, so I'm not going to spoil this for the next question, uh, which deals more with transparent distortion of the one infinite creator. So a couple of things. One that we need to keep in mind for the next couple of questions is um, social memory complex, right? Is the readiness of the social social memory complex. Two is the more uh, transparent view that we have of the one infinite creator. So those are factors that are important importance of four density harvestability those two things social memory complex and how we see the creator is a different view we can see the creator from third density in one way in four density is another one fifth sixth all the way to seven so that is a function it's very important don says question 14 then the big difference in harvestability between third and four density is that at the end of the third density the individual is harvested as a function of individual violet ray but in fourth density, is it the equivalent of violet ray then for the entire social memory complex that must be of a harvestable nature to go to fifth density? And Ra says, this is correct. Although in fifth density, entities may choose to learn as a social memory complex or as mind-body spirit, mind spirit complex complexes and may graduate to sixth density under these conditions. For the wisdom density is an extremely free density. Whereas the lessons of compassion leading to wisdom necessarily have to do with other selves. All right, so um, let me finish the last question. Yeah, before I finish this up, the last question that we have, Don says, then is sixth density harvest strictly of social memory complex? Because again, we have compassion blended back using wisdom. Ron says, this is quite correct. Uh, and I'm just going to tackle those last two questions where um, Don, very perceptive, saying is that the big difference in harvestability between third and fourth density is that at the end of third density, the individual is harvested as a function of individual violet ray, meaning that in third density here, 
your harvestability has to do with your individual uh, beingness, your violet ray, how you, you know, that, that's why it doesn't matter, you know, how the world is, it's how you are. <laughs> and that's not to say like, oh, yeah, fuck the world, you know, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I'm just doing myself, you know, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with you becoming, you know, who you are. And by default, what's funny is that now you start helping people and people are like, oh, thank you so much. And you're like, uh, I don't know what I did, but yeah, you're welcome, I guess, <laughs> you know, and just you becoming yourself, becoming a harmonious instrument to be played by the creator. But it is individual and this is the best way you can help too, helping yourself. The more you, uh, you help yourself, then the better you can help other people. So that is the big difference because in Fort Density, it is a function of the social memory complex violet ray is what Don is saying, um, that the entire social memory complex must have in order to be harvestable. And Ra says that this is correct. Um, if I was Ra, I would say like, wow, you know, you are like, sometimes Ra says to Don, like, this is very perceptive. Uh, although in fifth density, and they're going into now into fifth density, uh, which is of great use us for us too, and I'll go into the conclusion for that. Um, it's correct, although in fifth density entities may choose to learn as a social memory complex. So essentially, you can choose in fifth density to learn as a social memory complex because you already know Unity, or you can choose again to do it individually. Now, why? Why would you go individual if you have the possibility of doing it all together? They say that. The density of wisdom is extremely, it's an extremely free density. See, whereas the lessons of compassion leading to wisdom necessarily have to do with other selves. So you see, you go together. And that's why I wanted to overlap the last question that I have for today's video. Uh, first part, session 43. Where Don says, you know, is uh, six density harvest strictly of social memory complex? Because again, we have compassion blended um, into um, blended with wisdom. And that is correct, because here we go into the nature of each energy center and each density. They are what I, what I call inner work, outer work. Okay. Uh, first density is outer work, you're manifesting, okay, or the creation is being manifested. So it's outer, it's manifesting, it's coming out. Uh, second density is inner work, is realizing I am something, I am a self, I am this. That is graduation from second to third density. Third density is outer work, you know, it's, it's realizing, okay, I belong to people, people are me, you know, it's... It's an outer work, it's not inner. You have to see reflection of yourself. It's service to others or service to self by using others. You see, it's a key difference there between service to self being like, I just like to be by myself. That's not service to self, that's fine. I like to have solitude, that's fine. You know, it, service to self is using other people. See, you're making use of the outer world for your own progress. And service to others, of course, positive path, you use the others as yourself. <laughs> you treat others as yourself, so you're using everybody else as, hey, let's go all together, let's all jump together, you know, yay, a party, <laughs> as opposed to just me. And I'm the I'm the, the one in the VIP section <laughs> in the party, uh, which sucks, by the way. Never go to a VIP section, always sucks. Go down there with people, especially in uh, EDMs and stuff like that. When I used to go to EDMs, it used to, I went once to VIP and I was just like, this sucks. <laughs> so for density again it's just inner work it's all you know finding that compassion the love in you realizing that now fifth density again is outer work you see everybody as co-creator because you already you already know you're a creator a co-creator so now you see everybody it's almost like a, a, a third density um a higher third density type of work and you can do it individually or you know with a group but now in sixth density you're balancing compassion again because now that you acquire wisdom, now you need to balance the newly acquired wisdom with the love that you brought from Fort Density. And now you do inner work again, so everybody gets together. And you need to be harvested as a social memory complex, which is just inevitable at this point, because there's not much to, to learn other than 
to learn in seven density to do again what I would call outer inner work at the same time because you're going out into the nothingness and into yourself. You see where it goes. So, uh, you know, it's outer, inner, outer, inner, outer, inner, outer, I think. Yeah. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, when I say six, five, seven, I don't know. I'm rambling too much. Um, that's it. <laughs> that's all. That's all I got. Conclusions. You see, we explored um, kind of mutilations. That's just to say, okay, that exists. Let's go into the positive. Let's go into the the opposite side of that, the polar opposite. It's polarity because that's what's you know it's going to bring us to a higher means. And again, it's just not to you know say anything wrong about people who do their research and their work on cattle mutilation or UFOs. You see, something curious about this is that. Um, Mentioning the chupacabras here, and just again, this is a practical point of view for dealing with reality. I remember as a kid, I used to be afraid. I'm like, oh my god, if this thing comes here. Uh, by the way, Ra said that they're not able to harm third density beings. They're not. That would be a violation of a huge violation of um, uh, free will. So don't don't fear, fear not, fret not. It's only you know for shows. But yeah, as a kid, as you see, they give so much covers to this sensationalist thing, you know, like all oh, the chupacabras or whatever. There are other creatures that they started making. I forgot their names, but they, they gave names to different creatures because they started studying them and all this stuff. And, but I never heard anything about crop circles, for example, you know, or uh, UFO abductions that were actually very positive, which is the majority of them actually, you know? So you ever heard, you always heard the negative. If you think that we have transcended that with our new media, you'd be wrong, very wrong, <laughs> because it's the same thing that's happening now. So all the things that you see now, like distracting you with the war or with the pandemic, 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 which one you use? I don't know. Um, all the stuff just to instill fear and all that. It's nice to know that exists because as a reflection, there's a positive side there. So, you know, there is, there's communities, uh, going on about this stuff there is all the positive everything that you can see opposite to that is there too for you to explore so it's always nice to say like oh nice you know they're doing this i can go over there you know i have these resources too so that's what i'll get from cattle mutilation uh conversation 40 years ago between don and ra and now to um the energy centers again which i think is the most fascinating topic that we can possibly discuss because they describe our consciousness. And through them, we can learn ourselves. We can learn to know ourselves. And that is the key of everything. Learn who you are. Find out who you are. Find out the I am portion of you. And you'll be well uh, off on your way to see in this cosmos and this universe as you, who you are. So. With the energy centers, what we get is, um, once again, you know, an exploration as to, you know, what, what I said at, uh, at the end. Every one of those balancing exercises that we have for analyzing the self and our reality, catalyst experience and so on, is to, with our emotions, see where they are affecting us and where we put them and transcend from them. How we do it, it's completely up to us. You know, we have talk about plenty here in the raw material, and there's a lot of other stuff that it's, you know, it, it's it's helpful to know. So whatever you're into, that's fine. You know, as long as it's teaching you how to transcend, you know, these emotions into something, uh, you know, real, which is love, the sentiment of of love. So that's what we call transmuting anything into love. Um, so inner work, outer work, you see where it is, that is, uh, it's working, what it's related to. We have described the energy centers again in different ways. And these are to me, the resources for, for having, um, a better outcome in our lives and just to enjoy life in general. So with that, I come to the end of this first part, second part, like I said, we're going to keep exploring four density, fifth density, sixth density, even what they eat. It's fascinating. So, we're gonna get into that too, of course. 
Um, thank you so much for watching. In the description is not only Scott Mandelkers, which I really recommend. He did it about five, six years ago, and uh, he finished all 106 sessions. Um, little Easter egg. I didn't know about Scott Mandelker until I started doing the raw material because I looked it up in Spanish and I realized that nobody had done it. And then I looked up in English, Law of One material, and I only got Aaron Aki, which is fantastic. You should be aware of his work. Uh, and that was it. I think um, there's another Scott, Scott, Brian Scott, is also a phenomenal guy who talks about the Law of One. He reads Kuo and other Confederation entities. Uh, all of them, I don't have uh, Brian Scott's here, but Aaron Aki, you should know. If not, just type him in. But I have Scott Mandelkor's playlist on the Law of One in my description. There's also how to support me and my work in the description, how to donate if uh, that's something that you're inclined to do. If not, the best thing you can do is just give a like, subscribe, share it with somebody who is into this and want to know a little bit more. And that's it. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you because you are me and me are you. <laughs> Started to sound like Jar Jar Binks here. Uh, but that's it. I'll see you in second part of session 43.